In this video, we'll do an exam review on the Wilson disease, hepatolenticular degeneration. So what's Wilson disease? It's a genetic autosomal recessive disorder in which excess copper buildup in the tissue due to mutation in ATPase enzyme, ATP7B gene. So what's the function of ATPase enzyme, ATP7B? ATPase enzyme links copper to ceruloplasmin and releases it into the bloodstream and number two ATP7B also removes excess copper by secreting it into bile. So there are two functions of ATP7B. It combines copper to ceruloplasmin and number two it removes excess copper by secreting it into the bile. Both functions of ATP7B are impaired in Wilson disease. Now pathogenesis and pathophysiology of the Wilson disease. ATP7B deficiency causes excess copper accumulation in the liver hepatocytes that leads to copper toxicity due to oxidant damage. So excess copper causing oxidant damage in the liver. Increased ceruloplasmin catabolism causes decreased blood level of ceruloplasmin but it may be normal. So decreased ceruloplasmin is due to increased catabolism. Initially serum copper level is low but later in the disease it increases and free copper deposits in different organs particularly in the brain kidneys and eyes. Number four, excess copper in the liver leads to recurring hepatitis, fibrosis and macronodular cirrhosis. So the damage in the liver is recurring hepatitis with fibrosis and cirrhosis. The disease is progressive and if left untreated it causes death. Number six, in the brain most copper is deposited in the basal ganglia particularly in the putamen and and globus pallidus or lenticular nuclei. So in the brain they are mainly deposited in the lenticular nucleus which is putamen and globus pallidus. Number seven, patient must inherit a mutated gene from both parents to express the disease. Now clinical features of the Wilson disease. The onset of the disease usually occurs in late 20s but it may start in the early childhood or in late adulthood. Excess copper in the liver leads to jaundice, spider angiomas, increased liver enzymes, decreased serum albumin, decreased clotting factors, recurring hepatitis, fibrosis and macronodular cirrhosis. All these features of hepatic failure with jaundice, spider angiomas, raised liver enzymes and decreased serum albumin and clotting fracture, edema, ascites and hepatic encephalopathy. Now what are the features in the eyes? There is a pathognomonic sign known as cashier flasher ring. This ring is in the decimate membrane of the cornea due to copper deposition. Cashier flasher ring occurs in more than 99% of cases with neuropsychiatric disease but only in 30 to 50% of cases with hepatic disease. Disease. So Kesher Fletcher ring occurring in more than 99% of cases of neuropsychiatric disease but only in 30 to 50% of cases with hepatic disease. Number two, Wilson disease is also associated with sunflower cataracts with green brown pigmentation on the anterior and posterior lens capsule. So two abnormalities in the eye, number one Kesher Fletcher rings and number two sunflower cataract. Now features in the kidney. In the kidney there is renal tubular acidosis, decreased carbohydrate and protein absorption, disorders of bicarbonate handling by the proximal tubules leading to nephrocalcinosis. Also there may be cholelithiasis, abortions and arthritis. Amongst the endocrine abnormalities there may occur hypoparathyroidism and in the brain patient has neurologic and psychiatric symptom. Now neurologic features most important of them are number one tremors, dystonia and incoordination and number two there occurs spasticity, rigidity, muscle stiffness, dysphagia and dysarthria. So there are dystonia, dys 
chest failure, dysarthria and tremors in Wilson disease. And what are the frontal lobe disorders? Impulsivity, impaired judgment, apathy, poor planning and decision making. Personality changes, a feature of frontal lobe abnormality and subcortical dementia. So in frontal lobe disorders of Wilton disease, there are personality changes and poor planning and decision making and a cognition defects are mild cognitive deterioration. Now psychiatric problems in Wilton disease, anxiety, depression, psychosis and behavioral changes occurs few years before neurological disturbances. So psychiatric features occur before the neurologic feature. There is loss of emotional control, temper, tantrum and hyperactivity. Now the diagnosis of the Wilson disease. Number one, clinical features, jaundice, increased liver enzymes, edema, ascites. Number two, serum copper. Serum copper decreased initially but increased later. Number three, decreased blood level of ceruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin level is less than 200 milligram per 100 ml but it may be normal. Number four, 24 hour urine copper. Number one, in symptomatic patients, the urine copper is more than 100 microgram. And number two, 50 percent of pre-symptomatic patients have increased urinary copper. So the copper in urine in 24 hours is more than 100 microgram and in pre-symptomatic patients 50% have increased copper urinary excretion. Number 5 nasal prognostic index. The nasal prognostic index is an index of the liver functions on point scoring from three liver functions. Number 1 serum bilirubin, number 2 serum aspartate and number 3 prothrombin time. Each one gets four points and it starts from normal to abnormal zero to highest four points. So briefly here I discuss four points. The point four level of the Nazar score is number one serum bilirubin is more than 17.5 milligram per 100 ml but doing this serum bilirubin exclude hemolysis. If there is hemolysis it gives a wrong figure. Number two serum aspartate AST is more than 300 international units per liter and number three prothrombin time is more than 20. So in point four scoring of a nasal serum bilirubin more than 17.5 milligram, serum aspartate more than 300 international unit per liter and prothrombin time is more than 20. Number six liver biopsy is the gold standard for diagnosing the hepatolenticular degeneration and gives the definitive diagnosis. In liver biopsy, number one, copper assay is done and it is more than 200 microgram per gram of liver tissue. So copper more than 200 microgram per gram in liver biopsy which gives a definite diagnosis and number two, liver biopsy also gives non-specific hepatitis. Now patient management with Nazareth score. Number one with score seven patient is managed with trientine and zinc and these two drugs should be given one hour apart. Number two is between score seven and nine where there is hepatic decompensation the same medicine trientine and zinc. Number three with the score of more than nine hepatic transplant. So management with nasal scoring is up to score 9. It's trientine plus zinc one hour apart and if the score is more than 9 then the treatment is hepatic transplant. Now treatment of the Wilson disease. Number one, all pre-symptomatic patients should be treated as the disease is 100% penetrant. So all pre-symptomatic patients should be treated. Number two, anti-copper treatment is lifelong. Number three, low copper diet and no copper cookware should be used. Number four, medications, chelating agents, trientine and D-penicillamine. But D-penicillamine is toxic and it worsens neurological disease. It should be given with vitamin B6. So amongst the chelating agent, trientine is preferred over D-penicillin because of its toxicity and neurological worsening. Number three, zinc. Zinc competes with copper in the GIT for its absorption so reduces copper absorption. So what's the drug of choice in Wilson disease? Number one, without hepatic decompensation. The drug of first choice is zinc. Number two, in mild to moderate hepatic 
decompensation, triantine plus zinc. And number three, with severe hepatic decompensation, there occur hepatic encephalopathy and portal hypertension. The treatment is liver transplantation. And number four, for neurologic and psychiatric disease, tetrathiomolybitate plus zinc. So, the drug of choices in different stages of the Wilson disease are number one, without hepatic decompensation, treatment of choice is zinc. Number two, with mild to moderate hepatic decompensation, triantine plus zinc. Number three, with severe hepatic decompensation, liver transplant. And number four, neurologic and psychiatric disease, tetrathiomolybitate plus zinc. Why is zinc used as a first choice for Wilson disease treatment? So zinc is used as the first choice in Wilson disease because number one, it's safe in Wilson disease. Number two, zinc competes with copper in GIT for its absorption. So, it decreases the copper absorption. And number three, zinc induces metallothionine synthesis which sequesters copper. So, zinc is safe in Wilson disease, competes with copper and prevents its absorption. And number three, it induces metallothionine which sequesters copper. Zinc is used for maintenance therapy also and also for pre-symptomatic patients, pregnancy, pediatric patients and for non-decompensated hepatic disease or cirrhosis. So these are the uses of zinc in Wilson disease. Now treatment of the neurological disease. The drug of choice for neuropsychiatric disease is tetrathiomolybitate. So why is it used? It has low toxicity, rapid onset of action, preserves neurological function. Zinc can be given with tetrathiomolybitate, but penicillamine and trientine worsen the neurological conditions. Hepatic transplant improves neurological conditions. Neurologic and psychiatric symptoms improve 6 to 24 months after starting the treatment.